Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is back, and we are here with Afternoon Tea Time, and I have a returning guest, not once, not twice, but three times. That's right. It is her third time on Tea Time. So Bracca Getz is in the house, and we're going to be talking about her new book called Nourish the Soul. So grab your tea, grab your coffee, grab your gossip juice, water, whatever. You do not need to drink tea with Miss Liz as long as you're just sitting in and enjoying the comfort of this incredible tea time together. So we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed to that. And if you want, you can check out Miss Liz on all podcast apps. Uh, give that a good quick subscribe and follow as well. And then you can hear all of these incredible tea times at any time uh, in your home, in your car, at an event. Uh, you know, if you're just needing something to pick you up and you're having a down day, you can go out and check over 300 interviews from all walks of life on Tea Time. So we have children's books, we have adult stuff, we have relationships, we have all of that goody stuff in there. But today we're going to be talking with Bracca Getz and we're going to be talking about her new book called Nourish Your Soul. So get ready for that. We're going to do disclaimer, we're going to do bio, and then we're going to get Bracca in here and we're going to have some tea. And today's tea is teaching everyone's appreciation. That's right, a lot of appreciation today. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And all tea time shows are done on Thursdays, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless it's a surprise returning or rescheduled tea time that's done on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, tonight's tea time at 7 p.m. has been rescheduled to August 5th due to a hurricane that was uh, uh, due to Mother Nature's hurricane in Texas. So Fern Brady will be here on August 5th for that as well. So let me get you in with a little bit about my guest today. So Bracca Getz is a Harvest, Harvard educated author of 42 books that help children's souls shine and a candid memoir for adults about her journey to joy called Nourish the Soul. You can get all of her books on her website, which I'll have on the bottom and we'll get Guy Bracca to share that during our conversation. So let me get her in here and let's start having some tea together to teach everyone appreciation today. Welcome Brock. So happy to be back. <laughs> it, it, I returning guest because the ice is already and we always have fun together so it's amazing that you're back it's it's a joy to be with so you Bra always so Bracca, let's get into who you were as a little girl and who you are now for the viewers and listeners out there that might have not seen your previous two tea times well how I was a little girl. It's a lot like what I am still today. I'm telling you, I don't know why, but somehow I've, I've kept a lot of that childhood stuff in my being. The curiosity about the world and the sense of wonder about life. Like right before I came on here, 
you asked me to try something I never did before and I'm fooling around with it, but you have to keep, if you, if you keep that playful sense in your life, then things are not so scary. It's very helpful. You play around with it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I ended up finally at the last second pushing the right buttons after pushing all the wrong buttons. And um, that's just how it goes, you know? Be playful. I think I'm still a playful kind of person like I was as a child. Yeah. Oh, you've been frozen. You've been frozen for a few minutes. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> Technology issues. This place is used to it. It's five years. This has happened all the time. I don't don't worry. My guests know what to do. They just keep on talking and keep on sharing. And it just pops in and out like popcorn, right? We have some fun. We play. So, Raka, you were sharing on how to be playful, right? Yes. Childhood uh, alive, right? Yes, exactly. So let's get into that a little bit more on staying young at heart. Exactly. That's really why I write children's books. I think like a, honestly, I told I identify as a six-year-old boy for some reason. I don't know why. So I, in many of my main characters are six-year-old boys in my books. They are empowering because uh, like this little boy, he learns about stuff in life and he's sharing it with all his friends. And, and that's how I teach different concepts like the prevention of abuse. I, um, it's helped save many lives, the books about prevention of abuse. And um, there's books about teaching children about other children that have disabilities so they are more sensitive to other children and can be more inclusive and can invite them because they're usually the loneliest people their children with disabilities usually don't get invited to parties and play dates like other children so and 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 children that are not so neurodiverse they just may not know how to interact. So I, I provide them with basic guidelines. It's called, um, hmm, do I have the book here? Well, it's called Let's Appreciate Everyone. And it teaches children that if you see another child with a visible disability, you stare. Usually children stare. And that's totally normal because you're curious. So you're staring. But there's another five-letter word that also begins with S, and that's smile. Cool. If you yes, if you add your smile to your stare, it creates a bridge. That's what a smile is. It's a bridge going down like this. And and you walk across that bridge and you connect your heart to the other child's heart. That's what a smile does. So in this book, it explains a lot of ways to connect with children that have visible disabilities and also invisible disabilities as well. So, Bracca, you you have a new book called Nourish Your Soul. So look, let's talk about that and how you got the title of that book, because I'm always interested in the titles of your books because they're really grabbing, right? They, Thank they, they you. Attention. Thank you. Yeah, this book used to have a different title and it was republished as Nourish the Soul. And the subtitle is Filling the Emptiness Within. We all have emptiness within us. And it's natural. It's on purpose. We are meant to have this hunger. That is what gets us to nourish our hungry souls. It's 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 God given to us, this, this, this hole within all of us. And 
I suffered from addictions and addictions are widespread because people are trying desperately to fill that hole within them with externalities. And it doesn't help. The hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The more we try desperately and the more desperate we're doing it, the more, the bigger the hole gets. It's not a physical hole. So all these physical things won't help. It's a spiritual hole. And the only thing that fills the spiritual hole, there's just one thing, and that's gratitude. That is what fills us up. The last time you were on Tea Time, we talked about gratitude and we talked about connection and that as well. Yes. Um, and we did, you had an orange, I remember the last time. Here it is. <laughs> Still the same <laughs> orange. The orange. And she brings the orange back again, guys. This is how it works, right? Miss Liz, a little, little clip, it's kind of clip back, back. And, forth, right? <laughs> and I remember that we talked about the orange and the impact that it makes. So for the listeners and uh, audience that haven't seen uh, what we talked about in, in the last episode uh, together, Braca, could you share a little bit about what the orange represents? You bet. This, uh, this, uh, this orange has been here for ages waiting for you. Here we go. So this, this orange, no, like all fruit, all fruit, when it's on the trees, they are all green. They are green because they're hiding. They're being camouflaged in with the leaves. And when they become ready for us, when they're finally ripe, they become the most vivid color that they can be. So they're bright and beautiful so that they're beautiful for us to look at. We get pleasure from looking at them. They call to us, we're ready. This is how they let us know they're ready. And so they're beautiful to look at, a pleasure to our eyes. And they smell beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It smells so fresh and beautiful. Wow. And then we open it up and we experience we get to taste the pleasure of the sweet juiciness it's kept in for months in this amazing individual packaging this is incredibly individually packaged we take off the peel and after we finish eating it we are left with the most amazing seeds the seeds turn into trees when they're planted and the trees can become infinite more oranges. So this is such an amazing example for practicing gratitude. Packed in this little tiny orange is infinite wisdom and infinite loving compassion for you, for whoever is going to eat this orange. This was made with so, so much love for you to enjoy. I, I, it really, it just blows my mind every time I think about it, how awesome this is. And this is just one tiny gift of all the abundance of gifts that we all have in our lives. This very moment. Raga, I, I love the orange because the last time you brought the orange, it shows the connection and growth, right? Planting the seed, growing the tree, uh, you know, enjoying the juices, the flavors, the scents, you know, we, we take so much for granted in life. And then the Braca brings us orange and there's life, there's movement, right? And I really love how you bring that orange and just show people the little things matter, right? The little it's things is what plants us all and connects us all. Exactly, exactly. We, there's like a line. One day we're going to look back and realize the the little things were the big things. That's it. Exactly. I like it. The little things are the big things. <laughs> you know, we, we take so much for granted, you know, and then you bring this little orange in and boom, yes. it's so life. It shows you what is right at our fingertips that we're not even paying attention to. Uh, you know, it could be an apple. It could be an orange. It could be a grape. It could be, you know, like, let's really start looking at the little things and appreciating the little things. Exactly. Uh, 
you know, Bracca, every time you come, I always enjoy having conversations with you because you always open my eyes. You bring the excitement back into, into uh, the day, you know, uh, and you have incredible books out there. You have 42 incredible books out there. So could you share a little bit about some of your favorite books? I know that they're all your favorites, but <laughs> <laughs> I do this to my authors. I pick your favorite. And it's like, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mentioned about the fruit. So one of my books is called Hashem's Candy Store. It's about all these candies straight from God. That's what they are. Bananas, the grapes you mentioned, the pears, the plums. It's all candy that's been made. This is the really good candy. The candy that nourishes us because we, we compare this to a tangy taffy, an orange flavored tangy taffy where even the wrapper pollutes the environment. It doesn't do anything good for our bodies. And this this, if we enjoy it with gratitude, the orange, it nourishes both our bodies and our souls. The gratitude is what nourishes our soul. So if we eat these amazing, amazing candies that we get from straight from the Almighty created for us, designed for us, it's great for our bodies. And if we want to nourish our souls at the same time, then we enjoy them with gratitude. Then we get, then we get the full treatment. So that's, you know, that's how to enjoy it fully. That's how to really fill up on these things. When you eat a bag of potato chips, you know, you're mindlessly eating it. The, these things, they, they bring immediate comfort, immediate gratification, but they don't fill us with gratitude. Afterwards, we feel emptier than the bag itself, you know. We, we, so if, but if you really want afterwards to feel a joy in living, that's with the natural foods, spending time in nature, moving our bodies that were designed to move, dancing, swimming, gardening, walking, whatever you enjoy doing, music. These are all I. It's the pleasure ladder. It's the low, the lowest level of pleasure are all the physical pleasures in this world, all the natural physical pleasures that were designed for us to enjoy, to nourish our bodies and our souls if we enjoy them with gratitude. So the pleasure ladder, people can actually download um, a pleasure ladder chart. It looks kind of like this from my website. It's a free chart that we made for people to download and they could put it on their fridge or on their on their cabinets. Whenever you get the urge to just overeat, you can look at this pleasure letter. I don't have all the details in here, but on the chart on my website, I filled in all the explanations that I'm giving over now about the five rungs on the pleasure ladder. So that, that you can remember when you feel like overeating or engaging in another addiction, that there's an abundance of ways that you have the power to bring pleasure into your life this very moment. You, we, we overeat or we do other addictions because we feel there's a scarcity of pleasure in our lives. In order to recognize the abundance, the pleasure ladder reminds us that there's an abundance of ways and we have the power in our hands. That's five fingers, like the five rungs on the pleasure ladder. We have the power in your own hand to bring pleasure into your life this moment by practicing gratitude. It's it's that simple. So the lowest level are all these natural physical pleasures like the orange. And do you want me to go into the other levels? Of, of, sure, go ahead. Okay, so the next level up is love. Now, love does not sound empowering. Love sounds like it's dependent on somebody else coming into your life. But the definition of love here 
is focusing on the virtues of another. All of us have somebody that once did a kindness for us. If we focus on the virtues of that person, it could be, let's say a person's in prison. They could focus on a grandmother that once did a kindness for them. And I'm mentioning a that, and they are suddenly filled with a warm emotional feeling of love and appreciation. So we can bring this love into our lives at any moment by focusing on the virtues of another. And we are uplifted and we could be inspired to be better people just from focusing on that love. Bring it into your life whenever you're feeling lonely. And the next level up is meaning, doing something good and meaningful. I, I want to say that this pleasure ladder is not my invention. This is ancient mystical wisdom. This is from the Kabbalah, which is ancient mystical wisdom. And I am just sharing what I was taught. So meaning is whenever we do something good and meaningful. And I, 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 I was on another show and the guy said that he was feeling very lonely and miserable. He bought a big pie of pizza and he had two slices of pizza and he's about to plow through the whole box of pizza by himself. And there's a knock at the door. His neighbor needs him to help, needs his help for two minutes, maybe move some furniture or something. He comes back to his apartment and he does not want the rest of the pizza anymore. What changed? In two minutes, he felt grateful that he could help another person. He, he no longer felt cut off, estranged, alienated, lonely, depressed. He felt a connection. A connection was made, right? Here in the bottom level, we're connecting to another thing. Then we're connecting to another person, even in our hearts, just in our hearts. Now we're connecting by giving back. Each one is a level of gratitude. We connect by giving back to others. And that uplifts us. Right away, um, like the whole container of ice cream stops calling your name. The minute you start connecting to another, connecting out of your own self. And the surprising one above doing something meaningful is creativity. This is when we bring a unique part of ourselves into the world, like your podcast, like, like all the creative things that you do for the world to make the world a better place. That's uniquely you. When we bring that into the world, we don't feel like eating or sleeping when we are in this creative zone. You know, we... And, and, and it's beyond time. Like time, we're not aware of time passing. We're on such a high when we are being creative. So, and then the highest level of all, it's called transcendence. It's the sense of oneness. It's when we recognize that we are all connected and we're all connected to the same source energy. It's flowing through all of us. Um, it's also when we transcend our own limitations and like we make that first crack in a bad habit and we, we, we connect to our real selves, our truest selves, our, our, our soul, our, um, the divine spark that's in all of us. So we've all had those experiences. Like, like if you've ever been under a starry, starry night in the country under the stars and you just know you're a part of a greater universe, I know that for me that stayed with me my whole life. And so we can always go back to that sense of transcendence. Each each level up the pleasure ladder is a more lasting pleasure and each level brings us more connection. So it's really the secret to happiness 
And there's only one price to pay to climb the pleasure ladder. And that price is gratitude. That is it. So there's nothing to lose by experiencing gratitude. One thing I really like about your, all of your books, Bracca, is that they all come together. They all fall together, right? They're all uh, the limitations of what we can change in our lives. And, and that I just want to name some of the a few books that you have uh, from your site. So if you go to Bracca's uh, website, you can find out Let's Swim Safely, Personal Privacy, Let's Stay Safe, Remarkable, uh, Remarkable Park. Remarkable Park, we have not talked about that one. Which one is that? That's you are so right. It's absolutely just brand new. This this just like came out. It's about how nature talks to us. It's it, it's really good for this season as we spend time outside and you can recognize how nature was designed to give us messages. It's amazing. Even even the hills and valleys in our world could all be flat. No, it's it's to tell us about life. Our lives are filled with ups and downs, and we see it in the topography of the world. It's telling us, don't worry. Yeah, you're going to go down, but you'll come up again. It's, it's showing us right here in this world. It's giving us encouragement. Here's an example of the ant. Let's, oh, that's it. I turn right to that page by accident, by accident. You know, that's the amazing. Universe does magic. <laughs> really amazing. It goes, let's climb down to the valley. Sometimes we feel low. But here, so close, I see a hill. Come on and up we go. Wait, watch out. Don't step on that. I see a tiny ant. The ant tells us to try so hard. He never says, I can't. How come you see the, you see, I don't know if you can see it, but the ants, they carry these huge things of food that's bigger than them. And they're all doing this to help each other out. You know, they've been designed this way. But they are there to give us encouragement too. You can do it. Did you ever hear? Did you ever, I heard a story of a grandmother whose grandson was under a car and she lifted the car up. I mean, she didn't have that strength, you know, yeah. but she, she did it because she got that superhuman strength to do it just from all her love, the infinite love. Yes, it's amazing. So, yeah, the book goes through all the different creatures, how they're, they're camouflage, all done with love. You know, there's, <laughs> there's so much to learn from so many different animals that we have. The dove, they're very loyal. Ah, the deer, how quickly it runs and, and encouraging us to do things quickly. And, and all the animals that are giving thanks in their own way the frogs that are croaking, the birds that are singing in the morning, all of them, they all have messages for us. So um, at the end of the book is like a scavenger hunt for children to look through the book and find all these different creatures that are hiding, but also to encourage children to go on scavenger hunts outside and look for all the messages that can be found in nature. It, this is just giving them some clues to begin looking. Yeah. Well, it goes right back to the nur nourish your soul, right? Because you got to look within. You have to yes. look and pay attention to the little things. The little things are the big things, right? Beautiful. Even in a scavenger hunt, you know, we're looking and we're searching. Uh, but I notice a lot of your books do have a little secret message in all of them about food, right? Some of them, many of them are about food, but all of them are about gratitude. In every single book, sometimes in a very quiet way, I put gratitude messages in every every single book because that is my most important message to children, to teach children happiness skills as early in life as possible so they don't have to play catch up like us. We learn these skills later on in life 
if I had known them earlier, oh my goodness, you know, there's a, a lot of unnecessary pain that I would have not had to experience um, if, if I had learned these skills really early on. So I'm just devoted to teaching children and adults these skills now because it's what the world needs more than anything is joy. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, every time we sit down, we, we open up that book of life yes. together. Yes. And, I, and that's what I really appreciate when we sit together, me and you, Braca, because we, we have those conversations of the simple things in life, right? Yes. yes. But those are what makes the biggest impacts in our lives as well. Exactly. It's the simple little things, right? Totally. I didn't realize that. For so many years, I was striving and trying to get, I really thought that there was something to fame and fortune and power. And then, you know, at Harvard, I got to meet all these famous celebrities. I feel very blessed that I got to meet them face to face. And I got to see that they're just like everybody else. And they too are searching for something more because they also didn't know the secret to happiness at that point when I met them. They did not know yet that gratitude is the answer and how, <laughs> there's a great quote I have up here. What's the difference between a happy life and a miserable life? How grateful you are. That's, it's that simple, just like you said. Yes. Well, and that's it, right? I, there's all walks of life out there and that's why you know on tea time i have all walks of life because we all are oh i think you froze again whoops uh yeah I... we're just spinning a little bit the little worms are playing with us again and the technology and I, another book but i, I want to tell you you oh i was going to go ahead there, yeah. you know that you met famous celebrities and 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 leaders and all of that when you were in harvard but they, they too are individuals and we need to start yes. really putting that into society, you know, that they too have their struggles. They too have their, uh, you know, their challenges and all of that. And they're, they're just looking for their nourish to sort and to nourish their souls. You know, it might not be everyone's cup of tea. They might want to make a movie. We might want to write a book. You know, we might want to play on the playground. They might want to play in on, on a ship. It's different, different aspects Beautiful. in different lives, right? And and this is what we need to do is we need to teach everyone appreciate. Exactly. Exactly. You're you froze again. I don't know. I I'm gonna I'll use this space. I, I another brand new book that I haven't told you about is Don't Read This Book. Um it has this funny title because it's written from that voice. It's written by that voice in all of our heads that is telling us to focus on what we don't have, to focus on what we are missing in life. So, um, there, and, and what we don't realize is that we all have a voice like that in our heads. Sure. So there's some storm so, going on in my area. So we might be having some te technical issues, but when we have good conversations like this on tea time, it, you know, these warm and technology issues come in and they try to play and shut us down. But you know what? You have to stay positive and keep going. Braca, are you back? Yay. And I, I, I kept talking. I don't know. So I, 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 just, I started talking about this, this new book. So this book is written in the voice of that nasty nagger in all our heads there's a voice that we all have and we we don't realize it we think we're the only ones but we all have a voice that is telling us to focus on what we're missing on what we're lacking it's trying all day long to get us to be miserable so i'm teaching very young children recognize that you have this voice and say hi 
it's you again. I recognize you. And I am not going to be miserable. I'm not going to focus on what I'm lacking. I'm going to focus on what I already have. So this book, it took me 30 years to write it because I didn't have the surprise ending that I wanted for the book. And when I finally got it, then I was able to complete the book. And what is the, this is the ending of the book. It's really this, that, that voice that we have in our heads, it's like a personal trainer. And we got to push it off. And this is how we grow our gratitude muscles, saying, oh, no, I'm not going to focus on what I'm lacking. I'm not going to focus on what I'm missing. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to be grateful for all that I already have. So if we teach this skill to children early in life, that's what this book is doing. It's teaching them how to outsmart that, that voice in all our heads that, want, that is trying to get us to focus on what we're lacking. Because really, really that voice, it wants us to overpower it. It wants us to push it off. And it wants us to grow our gratitude muscles. Because even that that voice is a gift from God. Even that voice inside our heads is a personal trainer designed especially for each person. It knows how to make you miserable. And, and we become aware of it. That's when we can push it off. Well, and it goes right back to your T, right? You're teaching everyone appreciation. And appreciation is gratitude. Appreciation is actually gratitude. Yes. So, Rebecca, tell me why you gave me those Makes my soul shine. Helping other souls to shine is what makes my soul shine. I mean, like a couple to me. So when I help everyone to develop appreciation and like you said, not take things for granted, it's, it's a total joy for me. All the time that I spend doing this, I, I, I just love sharing with this with people. Yeah. And something that is actually nourishing you. Uh, you know, if, if it's stressing you out, it's because there's other things that might be turning you off. Not paying attention to, and it's coming, and it's saying, "This is what's really bugging you," but that's not the issue, right? That's the exactly. And it could be very stressful. Dude. It changes the whole thing. Then, if we're being creative. And we're not afraid of failures, block. No, no, because we're just channeling that energy from the source of all energy. So it's just a grateful experience if out of being creative when you add in the gratitude. It completely changes the experience of being creative. Yes, and we can make mistakes, and we can goof up gifts, and we're just helping to recycle them through the world. It's not like everything's stuck on our shoulders. No, we're just a part of this and glorious I, I creation. We have a really good communication when we have tea together right is because we're not scared of feeling we're not 
scared of making a mistake or, you know, a, a glitch. You know, back in the day when I started in season one, you know, and this would happen, glitches and that, and, and all that, I would be yes. like, okay, that's it. It happens. You know, there's storms, there's mother nature, there's, you know, it could be glitches in the system on either end, or sometimes it's not even that message about yes. this time. You know, there's always a reason for everything. But if you get overwhelmed to move forward, you know, and that's what we talked about the last time when exactly. we were on right? the gratitude of moving forward, staying true, you know, because we get these struggles in life and life times and it says, okay, that's enough, you know, where we have the positive side saying, push up, climb the ladder, come on, I'm here, you know. So I really like that you brought the pleasure ladder in because it, we need the ladder yes. to climb. You know, and sometimes each ladder is different. So for all the listeners and audience out there, I, and you know, create your own ladder and see where you can come with it. Uh, take the words, put your meanings into it. Now, like what we did with Allison um, when we did the maps, really just play with them and reach out to my guests because Braca has some incredible books and each book has a message in it. That's what I like about your children's books because there's a message, there's a hidden adventure, like the one. Uh, yeah. there, you know, you you add these fun parts into your books, which I really enjoy. You know, and you. as a grandma, when you're reading these stories with your grandchildren, it's a scavenger hunt. You can make it fun, bonding time. We talked about all of this on other previous shows on Tea Time, how important bonding is. You know, reading, which one would be a good bedtime story? A bedtime story. Now, I know that we don't <laughs> read this book. A, a, um, a mother told me that recently, she read the book to her child before bed, she put the child to bed and um, I'm at a bed. He was like four years old. He'd come out of bed and she said, what are you doing out of bed? Oh, she said, wait a minute. Did that little voice inside the book and he didn't say a word and he's thinking about it. She goes and she does something else. She comes back. He's back in bed, fast asleep. The book, he, he internalized it. Oh, my goodness. That's what was happening. That voice was trying to get me in trouble again. Get out of bed, you know. And I, I found a Let's Swim Safely book. They, they memorize all, all the rules. It's, that's one. That's a book for toddlers because it's it's done on cardboard. You know, for a book that it's hard, hard for them to destruct. Um, a, a, an, anyone that's taking care of a child from the child in the water can never look away and do other things, not to look at phones or anything. And I didn't know until I started researching, I was asked to write this book and I didn't realize something so basic that drowning is silent. You do not hear anything. The child's underwater, they can't call for help. I recently experienced it. I was a around children and there was a child that was beginning to drown, not calling for help at all, completely underwater and frantically trying to get to the surface. You cannot hear a thing. So it's really important for the parents and the children to become aware. I, I, my background's in public health. You know, I was um, 
I, when I was undergraduate at Harvard, I was taking courses at the Graduate School of Public Health and Harvard Medical School. And it's, I, it thrills me to be able to teach public health through my children's books to children because I've learned that the books are in hundreds of thousands of homes, thank God, and it saved many lives. I get calls and emails from people that are really grateful just how the messages have helped to save their children. So it's very gratifying. And the thing with children's books is that every single age reads them. The littlest children, the old grandparents, the parents, and even teenagers, when they see the books laying around, they read them too, when no one's looking. And, and the children, they reread the books again and again, so the messages really get engraved on their souls. That's why it's a really important way to get important messages across to children. Yeah. Oh, I think you're frozen again. I will... Let's see. I should, okay, I'm going to keep talking. I will say that um, it takes, this is something I also I wanted to mention, it takes 400 repetitions to change a bad habit. But if we do it joyfully, we can change the habit in 10 to 20 repetitions. So that's why Again, if a child reads a children's book like a bunch of times, they get the message and they can change their habits just by reviewing the, the joyful messages in the books. Well, I really want to thank you for keep talking because, you know, these little wormholes, I keep towing Miss Liz out of tea time today, is really like, I'm not sure what's going on, but... Thank you so much for sharing that. And I really, that's what I really love about your books, Bracca, is because they have an educational purpose behind them as well. And you reach the younger age, right? You, you go for the younger age and the adults and all walks of life, all age groups have, can read these books and understand these books. Uh, you know, I want to really get back into the nourish, nourish your soul book, because that's based on your memoir. Yes. That's more your personal story and yes. i'd like to know a little bit more about that book so this book i didn't really write it i could i kind of compiled it from my actual diaries and then when i got older i called them journals and letters that i sent home and then i all i did really was fill in the missing pieces and from that i was able to see the thread of my life from age 12 to 32. So it's 20 years time and it describes why and how I developed food addictions and how I was able to heal from them um, by nourishing my hungry soul. And we talked a little bit about this, uh, the eating disorder and that. And yes. there's you know, there's not a lot of books out there. There's not a lot of uh, literature out there on eating disorder. There's a lot of speaking and sharing, but there's True. not a lot of literacy out there. So by you sharing your story and that, has that helped others? Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> people feel less ashamed about what they're hiding. When you have an addiction, you're doing everything in secret nobody knows how you're suffering. So when you bring it out into the sunlight, then other people feel less afraid to bring their own problems out into the sunlight. And, um, you know, people will say to me now, I have a very joyful life. Why would I want to share the depths of the pain that I was in? Because it was very painful. And in the book, I give very raw descriptions of what it's like um, to be like on an uncontrollable binge. And um, then I would fluctuate between that and um, very restrictive eating. So the two, it was a horrible way to live. I felt like 
it, 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 an addiction of any kind is like being in a prison and the walls get narrower and narrower as as the person gets deeper into their addiction. It takes over one's entire life. It took over my energy, my thinking, my feelings. It just controls everything. And, and it really comes from a sense of not having control in life. And you're trying to take control that way. And why does that happen? Because you don't trust life. You don't trust yourself. Once I finally could trust that there was an ultimate goodness to life, once I could finally trust that there was an ultimate goodness within me, that changed everything. Then I didn't have to be so controlling over the food anymore. And I could, when I began to trust in life, then I could begin to have gratitude and I could begin to appreciate all the expressions of love in this world. And that's how many people who have not had loving, compassionate childhoods, for instance, gratitude, the ex experiencing gratitude, practicing gratitude gives you a way to put that loving compassion into your own life. That's what gratitude is. It's lingering, it's savoring, it's enjoying things in life again. And when you first begin to do this, it feels awkward. It may feel strange, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets. And our brains have neuroplasticity. So we can change our brains and when neurons fire together, they wire together. So we create more neural pathways of gratitude. And that's how we, it becomes easier and easier as we practice it. And as we develop our gratitude muscles, that's what the brain is. The brain is like a big muscle. So as we, we create these nerve fibers around the muscle fibers, we are creating a whole gratitude world within ourselves. And um, it's just um, every minute that we are experiencing gratitude is one minute that we're not being miserable. So just keep adding those moments together. Well, I think it starts with just one thing a day, right? Just being, uh, show gratitude for one thing. And then, exactly. I, you know, as the week goes on, then two things and three things, you know, so yes. slowly climb that ladder. You know, Beautiful. we don't have to do all five steps at once because then you're going to fall. The ladder is going to fall, you know, take the steps one at a time. And if it takes you a month and it takes your, your sister or your brother a week, don't compare, just do your own ladder, climb your own ladder. Um, I really want you guys to check out Braca's uh, website, check out all of her books, incredible stuff. Braca, do you have any workshops or any events that are coming up in the future that you'd oh. like to talk about? I do, but I think it's a private one that I'm doing in New Jersey next. So I can't really invite people to it, but people can always, you know, um, schedule events. I love going all over. I've been traveling around a lot this summer, uh, doing events in different places, plus online. Um, recently, I went to Florida too, and it's been, it's just great. So I love doing events. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. So, Braca, do you have any new books that are coming out? Three more books are coming out soon. Um, they're not yet at the printer, so they won't be out until the fall. But one of them is a classic that I wrote years ago, and now we have re-illustrated it, and it's called The Happiness Box. Again, it's the secret of how to be happy, how a child can focus on gratitude. And um, oh my goodness, we have another amazing book coming out. I'm not, I'm not going to give the title yet. It's, we, have, we have three books coming out soon in, in the fall, so they're in process right now. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we love working on these books. It's a big joy. I always yeah. love that you, you're still working on new books, right? Because every time we have a conversation, there's a new book, uh, you know, and I love the formats of the books because they're all learning 
experiences. Thank you. Know? you. Uh, and if you ever buy Braca's book, you know, reach out to her, let her know how you like the book and all of that, because authors really enjoy that when we get feedback, right, for our books and, and that where we can improve, where we can add more, where we can add less. You know, Beautiful. sometimes the ladder step gets a little too long. We got to shorten it, you know, and as you're climbing the ladder, and do you ever notice that the steps get a little tighter and tighter? So, you know, as an author, do you feel sometimes the ladder is a good uh, stepping stone for you to take part in? Yes. Like you said, before we got on this show, you were telling me what to press and technologically, and you said to me, just play with it. Doesn't matter if it doesn't work out. That's all it is. Just play with it. And I tell people this, listen to this. Let's say people fall down, fall off the ladder, like let's say with, with eating addictions. Let's say they have 20 cookies one day you change it around because it's trying to get you that voice in your head going, oh you had 20 cookies you're off the ladder forget you say i'm grateful i didn't have 200 cookies you can always be grateful let's say you had 200 cookies i'm grateful i didn't have 2000 cookies you have always something to be grateful for so don't let it fool you. You know it's that voice trying to get you miserable. You push it right off and grow those muscles. It's there to help you. That voice, it really wants you to push it off. How do you like that? Isn't that amazing to find that out in life? Amazing. I always like because Bronca brings incredible books. She brings the orange. She brings the ladder. She brings the, the the weight. You know, there's so much playful time. And and like we like I said before we went live, like Bronca said, I told her just play with it. You know, and that's what Miss Liz wants all of you listeners out there and 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 the audience out there. Just play. Just try it. If you fall, you get back up. You know, you have gratitude that you even tried because trying is succeeding. So, Brecca, what final message do you have for everybody tonight? Okay, I got to tell you this. Let's say, imagine a man on top of a building. He's about to jump off. Okay? And a lady sees him from across the way and she says, whatever you do, don't jump. And he goes, why not? My life is miserable. I have so many problems. And she says to him, what if in addition to all your problems, what if you were also blind? And what if this moment you were given the gift of sight? Would you still jump off? And he goes, of course not. And she goes, now you have the gift of sight. Open your eyes. You, you have two legs that got you up onto this roof. You have arms that are moving. You have a brain that's working. You have so many things that you still can be thankful for in your life. And, and that is every one of us. Every one of us has wanted to end it at some point. And we all have so much to be grateful for. So let's just try to remember all the illnesses that we don't have right now all the body parts that are working, that we're breathing, that we can hear this. It's endless. We have endless things. Let's try to focus. What we focus on is what grows. Yeah, absolutely. Don't feed it if we don't need to, you know, feed what's good. Feed, feed the gratitude. Don't feed the ego. You know, let's let's really climb the ladders and let's grow together. And I'd love to see if anybody is doing the ladder, if you created your own ladder, if you drew your own ladder, I'd love to see it. And I'd love to share it with Braca as well. Uh, you know, that's what community is. That's what growth is. And that's what that orange is. Let's put this incredible orange out there and let's enjoy and nourish the flavor that's inside. And today's tea time, that's what I hope that you all got from this tea time was playfulness and climbing ladders and just trying and taking that step and being gratitude, show the gratitude, you know, teaching everyone appreciation. It starts with you and then starts in your home, starts in your community and then in your country. We all can do this together, guys, and we can all make a difference when we start sharing true teas because that's what Miss Liz does is we share true teas. So I will be back on August 1st with 
August lineup, but you can also check out Miss Liz's Facebook page and my YouTube page and all of that because the press release has been released for my August lineup and you can see all the incredible guests there as well. Bracca, I really want to thank you uh, for joining me for the third time on Tea Time. I always love when my guests come back and we get to sit and share another cup of tea together. Um, if you'd like to know more about Bracca, can you just spell out your website, Bracca, uh, so that they can reach out to your website and check out the ladder? Thank you. Getsbookshop.com. G-O-E-T-Z bookshop.com. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And I will see everybody August 1st and we'll do this all over again. We'll share some new TEAs with all of you guys out there. So for more on Miss Liz, check out my website at www.misslizesteatimes.com and I'll see everybody and we'll keep sharing and spilling and making a new life with the TEA of Miss Liz.